Hi, welcome to the channel. Music making, for me recently, has been focused on encounters with abstract sound. In the unfamiliar textures and noise of the no input mixing board and other electronic instruments, I found that sound can begin to feel like a persistent object holding itself against the flow of time. In working with this abstract sound, I found a lot of utility in the language of painting, and I'd like to share some of that with you today. When listening to music and sound, I think that we often think of these things as being a series of moments that are ordered in time. A, then B, and then perhaps A again, to speak structurally, or the alignment of musical events to a grid in time. But I think that there's a different way of experiencing sound when one of these moments extends to fill a longer period of time, and it sort of solidifies into a sonic object. It holds itself in time and creates a singular sonic mass. And we begin to see that flow of sound in time collect in an object that has texture and form. It may change, it may have variability to its surface, but this is a change without changing what we are encountering. It's a persistence, like when water freezes into ice. In thinking about these objects of sound, I'm really interested in thinking about them as paintings, as these constructed objects that can be experienced like a painting is experienced. And I think in part this comes from an envy of paintings and the way that paintings are made. To start, I think that the studio art practice is already one that's very familiar to music. I think we can trace it back to recorded music in the sort of early days of tape music and recorded music when the performance of music and the production of sound can be sort of split apart, decoupled in time. I think about the way that Morton Sabotnik described his practice of sound making as a studio art practice in which he would record and layer and edit and organize sound and then release it uh, as an object. But this is very familiar to us nowadays. I think that most art practices are about producing these sonic artifacts, the sort of the track, separate from the performance of it. But I think to push beyond that, to start to ask, what if we think of these objects that we're making as not just tracks that we still experience in time once the listener listens to them, but as sonic objects to be encountered, there's some really interesting resonances between painting and sound that I think we can reflect on, particularly the way that a viewer experiences a painting. I think that just as much as I'm interested in sound as a studio art practice, I'm interested in the experience of sound as a painting in a gallery. And why is that? So with a painting, the way that a viewer looks at a painting is so interesting, so appealing to me. The viewer approaches the painting, their attention scans across it, they're able to focus on particular things for as long as they like, reflect on them, engage with the painting, and then when they're ready, they can leave. This is very different than the way that music is experienced in time. The painting persists as an object. It doesn't change. It's not 
choreographed, it invites a depth of engagement with it as an object. And now building on this idea of sound transforming into a sonic object with the, the extension of a moment, I think that we can take some cues from painting and the way that paintings present themselves to, to create sonic objects that can be engaged with in a similar way. On this idea of attention, I think that we can imagine and we can experiment with sound that does not overwhelm or demand the listener's attention, that sort of pulls things back a little bit so that a listener's attention can drift and scan across the variety of sounds that are simultaneously present. The ear is already really good at this. If you've ever been to a party or some sort of social event where there are multiple conversations happening around you at the same time, you can find the way that your attention can drift from one to the other and pick out from the simultaneity particular conversations that are going on, particular voices. And I think in the same way, if we create music that does not overwhelm with a particular thing that it is sort of putting at the center of view, does not spotlight the center of the stage, we can create an object that can be experienced in the listener's own time as it maintains a texture and extends a moment. Thinking about synthesis and its relationship to fiction and invention that I discussed in an earlier video, I think that there are even more connections specifically with painting in the way that we can think about both of them as creating illusion and the representation of things. The way that we pan and create space in a track are not dissimilar from the illusions of depth and light that are created in paintings. The distinctions of representational versus abstract form that I think about a lot in the way that I produce sound, I think I'm borrowing very much from the way that these have been experimented with in painting and the way that abstract visual art presents itself. There are all of these resonance here, I suppose is what I mean, with painting and sound. And in thinking about paintings of sound, these are all invitations to, to follow these theoretical lines to new work. And that's what I've been doing recently with the work for my album that I'm releasing now. Much of my current work is inspired by this lens of painting, and it affects the way that I make sound in a sort of studio art practice. But I think it also shapes the decisions that I'm making about the construction and presentation of the sound as well. For a lot of the work on this album, as I was approaching reverb and delay and these sort of spatial slash temporal effects, I made a lot of my decisions around how I used these things based on the language of, of smudging and blending, to think about blending softness onto sonic forms or smudging the sound in time to decide how I wanted to construct reverb and delay on some of these tracks. I asked myself the question of how hard are these forms? What are the lines like on these forms that I'm presenting? I think that harmony is already attached in so many ways to the language of color, uh, but the way that you paint and blend and uh, stack harmony together to freely borrow from the language of color rather than the language of language, of a grammar of harmony, also invites new ways of approaching harmonic relationships of order between different sounds and their consonances. In the production of sound, I've also been thinking a lot about layering and scraping away material. That as you sort of record and then mix, you can create translucency and subtle ghosts or peel away sections entirely to reveal something underneath. And all of this simply creates new ways for me of, of approaching sound, and I found a lot of, 
of interest in this sort of metaphorical work of working through this lens of painting in sound. And now as I'm talking about these connections between sound and painting, the creation of sonic objects uh, that are more firm against time and its flow, I think that it's important to acknowledge a variety of related works that also have connections to this. I think that there's a lot of loop-based music, whether it's the sort of like shifting loops of ambient work like Brian Eno's loop-based work, or even in more sort of popular music production, the repetition of the loop creates an extended moment, uh, sort of a, a setting or a backdrop against which lyricism or any sort of like other sonic work happens. Uh, I think that loop-based music repeats time as a form of object making. I also think that longer form music, things that shift from an interest in form to an interest in scale, this is include sort of drone based work, but also I think like a lot of a lot of just like big works uh, that evolve slowly over time all stretch out the moment into an object as well. And in all of this, I want to emphasize that when I'm talking about painting with sound, I'm thinking about this as an open or permissive definition. I'm not trying to say, this is painting and sound, and this is not a painting as sound. I'm saying, what if we view things through this lens for seeing and making music? And how does that shape the work that we create? And as I'm getting to the end of this video here, I want to close with a, a little bit of a book recommendation. As I was thinking about this sort of studio art practice, the thing that got me onto this was this book by Joe Fig called Inside the Painter's Studio. And I think for anyone who is doing any sort of studio art practice, not even specifically painting, this is just such a cool book. It is a series of interviews with studio painters and uh, it's not focused on their specific output as much as it is their specific process, how they organize their studio, how they organize their work in the studio. And uh, it's just a, a series of interviews asking the same questions to all of these different artists. And you can see all of the different ways that they approach their work. It's so, so interesting to me as a window into other people's work processes. And it was the thing that got me started on this idea of trying to think more about the music that I was making as uh, something related to painting. It's just such a cool book. If you make art in any sort of studio practice, I would recommend taking a read through this if you can. The reason that I'm sharing these ideas about sound and painting is largely because they've been living in my mind for a little while, particularly as I've been working on my album. I think that when working on an album for me, I always have a set of ideas and questions that the work is meant to engage with. I see the work on my album as experiments and sort of communication of these ideas that I'm working with as another layer of meaning beyond just the presentation of sound. And so what I'm trying to do here is create a little bit of a window into some of the ideas that I am I'm working on. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to hear where these ideas have taken my work, my album, Emerging Artist, is going to be released this Friday, September 27th. And I invite you to listen to the album to hear how some of these ideas can play out. If you have any 
questions or comments about your own experiences with sound and its connection to other forms of art, I would love to hear about it. Uh, so please write a comment and let me know what you think. I hope that you enjoy the music that comes out of these ideas, and I hope you have a great day.